Well, I think of like Philip McKernan when we worked with him a few years ago, and he has this metaphor about him climbing up the mountain and he's going towards his passion and his wife wasn't next to him and he was really trying to pull her up. She wasn't ready for it. And he finally let go to have her do her own thing, to find her own purpose and her own journey. And when she discovered that for herself, whether or not he was already on the other side of the mountain, she was at least making progress. And, you know, speaking to those, and I speak to a lot of these people too, that don't want to be on board with these rituals and routines and the stuff that we do, it doesn't work for everybody. But if there's one thing that they can do to change the course of their relationship or parenting style, do that. If it's meeting every two weeks to discuss something, do that. If it's going on a retreat once a year to completely disconnected, do that. Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, Renee Warren. Hi. I'm going to shake your hand. Oh. How awkward is this? <laughs> I don't like that at all. I want to get up and get a hug. Okay. Uh, for those that don't know, you are my wife, my beautiful wife, my partner in crime. Uh, a lot of people ask me questions. And I figure I'd just get you on here and we can have the conversation live. Um, so for those that don't know, Renee, why don't you share our love journey, oh our story? Um, so people ask about me all the time. That's awesome. Yeah. They want to um, know, like, how do you deal with me? Uh, yeah. how do you deal with the kids? Um, but yeah, why don't you share your, your version? Cause there's two, there's okay. the right one and the wrong one of how we met. Right. So we met on Twitter and you approached me. <laughs> She's lying. I am. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I was living in Toronto. You were living in San Francisco at the time. And I saw that you were speaking at an event, and I was dating somebody at the time. And I reached out to you saying, hey, I want to pick your brain if you're free when you're in town. I'd love to talk to you. The time was managing a small business blog interviewing entrepreneurs. I had no clue who Dan Martel was. Um, and you said, sure. So we, I guess, scheduled. Well, you didn't see behind the scenes. It was me like clicking your photo on Twitter and then going to your Facebook and swiping going, she right. wants to pick my brain. Heck yeah. 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 Right. I didn't was, have the same thing. You didn't. No, no, no. You were just doing your job. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this was several months, maybe several weeks before you actually came to Toronto. Um, in that time, I, my boyfriend at the time and I broke up. And, um, which is fine. It's great. Had nothing to do with you, although you'd like to think it did. Um, and like how far into detail am I just, going? I this? like the story of when you first saw me coming okay, out of yes, the elevator. This is a great story. So in Toronto, there's a place called the Mars center, which is an innovation center. And if you've ever been there before, it's beautiful. They have most of their events on the lower level. And so it's what, 8 a.m., like the thing is just kicking off. People are slowly starting to show up for registration. And I'm there with people I know. I know most people there. And waiting for you um, because you, I guess, we had scheduled a time to meet. So anyway, I am registering and waiting for you to show up. And I happen to look up these really long set of escalators that go from the ground, maybe basement floor, yeah. all the way up to a main floor. And on top of that is a huge skylight that shines down on like the whole main level. So I don't know, for some reason there was, you were the only person on the escalator at this one time. So you're wearing, I think, a Flowtown t-shirt. As I wore every day. Yeah. And you had your bag and you were looking your phone. Surprisingly, you were looking your phone. Um, and I happened to look up and like, I kind of knew what you looked like over Twitter, but really didn't know what you looked like in person. Person. And so I'm sitting at the bottom of the escalator looking up as you slowly come down at these like beams of sunshine behind your back. And I realized in this moment how good looking you were. And I got so nervous because now I'm single. And you finally get down. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe you had the same reaction too a little bit. Yeah. Oh, no? totally. So you yeah, get down to the level and you're like, hey, you must be Renee. And then what happened? And she totally blew me off. <laughs> I was like, hey, so do you want to connect now and chat? And you were like, uh, well, no, you're probably really busy. So like, feel free to go get ready for your talk. And I'm like, well, my talk's not until this afternoon. You wanted to talk. And you're like, no, it's cool. Like, 
you know, we can catch up later. I don't want to, you know, take you from, you know, whatever. And I was just like, wow, she just blew me off. I yeah. also love the fact that sometimes you talk about the crumbs on my chest. Oh, this is so funny because it's like, it's totally the That's totally me. indication of the person that you are. Yeah. So we eventually did sit down yeah. while we were chatting and you're just... <laughs> You're just you. So we have black t-shirt and he's just got muffin crumbs stuck all over your shirt. And I was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, just trying to do too many things at once. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I don't eat many muffins, but uh, in the time I really enjoy them. Uh, so that's how we met. So now people know uh, you played hard to get at first. And then uh, shortly after we obviously, or we moved, you moved down to San Francisco. And I did. now we have two incredible little boys, Max and Noah. Um, what do you think, I have no clue, we didn't prep for this, so like, what, what, people are curious what it's like to live with me. Yeah, I feel like that's actually maybe the next book that I need to write. And what would the topic, what would be the title called? Living with Chaos. Yeah? <laughs> Unpack that for people. Okay, so, okay, I'm, I'm going to premise this entire conversation with the fact that I know hands down that if there's any entrepreneur in the world that inspires me the most, it's you. Mm. And every single day, while it is so challenging to live with you, I wouldn't be the person that I am or the entrepreneur I've ever been because, um, like because of you. So sweet. Thank you. Um, let's just remember that if this, you know, That's conversation the, uh, goes sideways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, you're like. <laughs> You're in a way you're a scientist because you're always experimenting. You're testing your own limits, which by default kind of brings us, myself, and the boys into the equation as well. Like one day you decided that you're gonna do a triathlon and you didn't even know how to swim. <laughs> and so all of a sudden every morning and every evening you're biking and running and swimming and I'm holding down the fort because I believe like it's inspiring, it's encouraging. You're setting a great example for not only us but for your community. Um, so you're always doing crazy different things. Like one day you're you know, doing a 14 to 18 hour fast and all of a sudden now I have to hide every single chocolate chip and cookie in the house. Yeah. And then the next week it's okay to have them. <laughs> um, so living with you is, it's fast paced, it never stops, it never slows down. And there was, when we first started dating and we didn't have like kids and houses and too much travel um we could do whatever we wanted and that to me was like a kind of a, a an appetizer to the rest of our life I didn't know so I figured you know once we have kids we'll sl settle down and we'll slow down which never happened it actually got faster what, what just for people to get a sense of our lives what what was July walk them through July okay so it's June 29th um school was done we so this this past summer, yeah. we packed up the kids and we went to Ontario. We rented a cottage with my family, and then we're there for a week. We did Toronto for a day. Then we went to Kelowna for two and a half days. Then we did Vancouver for a day. Then Galliana Island for five days. Came back home for two days and drove to Cape Breton for a weekend. Yeah. Then we most people do not know it where Cape Breton is on this podcast. So Cape Breton is like, think the opposite corner of East coast Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. So it's East coast. Um, so we went then, from East coast all the way to West coast back right. to East coast. Yeah. And then from Cape Breton, we were home for two hours, did a quick switch over, brought the kids to summer camp, dropped them off road trip. Then we did a road trip that took us through New Brunswick all the way through Maine. Yeah. Bar Harbor. Yeah. Bahaba. Bahaba. Um, so we were gone from, we were gone for an entire month. Yep. Nonstop. Nonstop. And your preference is? I'm a homebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people don't, I think, I don't think people realize no. that. Yeah. No. You're like, you love routine. You love the kids so going to routine. bed at the exact same time I love every routine. night. But in the 10 years that we've been together, I have quickly gotten bored of the same thing over and over It's again. true. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I love, I love like the two weeks of like refreshing and like getting back into Reset, things but yeah. then i'm like okay what's, what's next? next next adventure yeah it's because it's now a part of our life what do you think that you know other people that might be starting their entrepreneurial journey or thinking of having kids what do you think that we do different that they might not realize about how we plan organize manage approach being parents well 
approach I know there's, our relationship. Yeah, there's these preconceived notions of what it's like to be parents. And most of the stuff is true. You get lack of sleep when the baby's new. Um, and kids definitely need routine and structure in their lives. And our lives. kids are 11 months apart, so people need to understand you were yeah. pregnant twice. We had twins, essentially, but you had to yeah. go through the yeah. birthing process um, twice. But we also set out um, to like essentially apply business-like philosophies to our family life, which most people don't understand or appreciate that because what does that mean well yes it means spreadsheets and gantt charts and working through your executive assistant to like yeah to plan Schedule. our lives it, it, it's about scheduling but it also means having family values totally right so we have a mission statement we follow five core values every single week and we kind of gauge whether or not you know it's been a good week or bad week based on how well we've done mm -hmm. according to those values what are i know everybody's gonna ask in the comments below like what are those G cash. Yeah. <laughs> it just happened to work out that way. <laughs> yeah. So the, the words are growth, uh, community, adventure, spirituality, and health. Yeah. So those and, are our core values. Yeah. And they, they can change, but for the most part, that kind of pretty, covers pretty everything. Solid. Yeah. Um, and so we work on that in spirituality. We're like meditating every night with the kids, health wise, working out, eating well. And this isn't just you or just me. It's the entire family. Yeah. Like so, the kids' health, the kids' yeah. spirituality, the kids' community. Yeah. Um, you're also an entrepreneur. That's what I've always loved about you is you like to create. You're very much a creator type. Um, you're and an I think author. I can actually probably tell you the moment that I think, I don't want to say maybe you fell in love with me, but you were like super interested in me. It was when I was driving an old... Um, Corolla or whatever it was the your car was. Your grandfather's car? It was my dad's car. Oh, it was your dad's old car. And we're driving from Toronto First time to I went to North visit Bay. Your parents. Yeah. And I was embarrassed by the fact that I had all of these stacks of success magazine CD interviews. Darren Hardy. Yeah. Darren Hardy, John C. Maxwell in my car and you saw them and I, my face went beat red and I was like, oh my God, this guy's going to think I'm an idiot. And you it was the opposite. I was like blown away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. you were into personal development. Um, and I think we listened to those CDs the whole drive up. Oh, totally. You know, I still hours. have them. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, I mean, it's levels. I think I, I, you know, I know when I fell in love with you and I know, um, what it is that I find so incredibly attractive, uh, the way you show up for the boys. I mean, as a mother, you're just an incredible mother. Um, but how do you, how do you balance that? You know, cause I think women have a different approach than men. Mm -hmm. Biologically speaking, it's yeah. like, you know, I, if, when people say having kids is like having your heart run around outside your body. I think for right. women more so than men, it's like, it's like literal almost. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, how is that? How do you balance that? You know, where, you know, you have a husband like me that's driven to be the best and most fullest expression of myself that I possibly with my time on earth. That's like my true yeah. driving force. And you also have dreams and goals that you want to achieve, but you also want to make sure that, you know, mm -hmm. that we're good parents for our boys. Boundaries. And so how does that look? Well, I think, and I'm not speaking for every woman, but a lot of my female entrepreneur friends, um, they feel pressure to do it all. And as many people listening to this are entrepreneurs and understand that their business is one of their children. It's like, it's a, it's a child of theirs. Um, when your significant other understands that and appreciates that, it makes everything else so much easier. I never questioned whenever you had to travel. I never questioned the talks you had to give or the nights you had to work or the mornings you had to get up early because I knew it was your passion. And by default, if you're happy, I'm happy and you're successful, then we're all successful. And so in setting those boundaries though, too, it's like, okay, but what's in it for me? And when I was running my agency, you the same thing for you. You said you go do what you had to do and you would watch the kids. Like you never questioned having to be home with two kids under 11 months old when I was traveling. Um, you wanted to be just as involved. And so the boundaries was like, this is what I want to achieve in my life. And I understand where you want to be. So like, how do we meet in the middle? And it's not easy, <laughs> um, especially living with you. It can be very, very challenging. Um, but I don't, I can't anticipate or expect or understand what it would be like to be with anybody else. Mm. But, um, what are things that we have? Like, cause I mean, I think we take a lot of this stuff for granted. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that we like sit down and talk at the end of the year 
planning the next year. Yeah, we both quarterly, have our goals. We review our yeah. goals quarterly, blah, blah, blah. Like yeah. what are some of those, you know, habits, routines, rituals that you think other people would be um, curious about that we do to, that you feel contributes to our ability to integrate everything? Um, so we do weekly meetings mm -hmm. and for us, it's Friday mornings yeah, and 1130 before CrossFit. Yeah. We just sit down and we have an agenda. We talk about the same things, um, every week. People are going to ask what's on the agenda. So on the agenda is we rate each other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's good. Of, I mean, it's a, as simple as, as a husband, how have I been for you in the last right. week? And One I to say, 10, as a wife, you go how, two, exactly. I go, cool. There's an opportunity to improve. Yeah, no. You give me a laundry list that you've been typing up all week. <laughs> I work at it. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. Um, no, but I think it's a good, because a lot of relationships, they don't have these conversations enough. So after two or three months of, you know, feeling resentful towards the other for something, the conversation could have happened and it would have nipped that issue in the bud. So we do it. And yes, we don't do it every week because we're traveling and things come up. But when we do it afterwards, we always feel better and things improve a little bit every single time. Um, but what I wanted to say earlier and go back to the question you had about, you know, what it's like to live with you and how, what, like, what do we do to succeed as a couple? Um, there was an influential person who wrote on Facebook the other day, I'm not going to say their name, and they gave like 101 business tips and it was a pretty elaborate Facebook post and I thought it was brilliant. However, when he came to the parts in mentioning anything to do with relationship he said stuff like oh if if you know you're working 90 hours a week whatever on your business and your significant other doesn't appreciate that then end the relationship and it, it was very clear that the person needs to respect the entrepreneurs everything without any boundaries and I was like wow how can somebody who has done so well for themselves say something like that and I realized they failed in all of their relationships. And it's because it had to be his way or the highway. And so when it comes to like the seasons of business, like now you're in a really good season, things are flowing for you, have a great team, great customers. But reflect back to two years ago when you were working like 15, 16, 20 hour days to get your business to where it was now, that's where you and I needed to have those boundaries. We needed to have those weekly and it's a, and conversations it's a discussion. And, every and, single day. And you bring up a good point because like, it, and, and it's interesting because it's seasonal, but at the same time, what happens is you just keep iterating around the problem. Like, so for mm -hmm. me, it's like, you know, I really like working, so I got to watch myself. So like, you know, it was a conversation with like Renee, like, hey, for the next two months, I'm going to be working seven to nine, right? Yeah. So I'm going to pick up the kids at five, going to do the you night routine, yeah. but at seven, I'm going to work till nine. Then we can have our time together and go to yeah. like, cause we go to bed fairly early. But it, early. it's the communication. Like when you say it like that, yeah. then I'm like, absolutely. And here's but if why. You don't yeah. say it. Cause I'm I really like, want to accomplish exactly. this thing and I don't have the bandwidth and like it's, it's, I just feel like a lot of people and I, and I had this call once with uh, somebody that we both know and they, their conversation with their wife was, I'm going to go crush it for the next three years. Don't expect me home but it'll be worth it. And that I was like, wow, like yeah. why it doesn't have to be that way. No. Like even I wouldn't accept that it would have went on more than two months. Cause he's a terrible entrepreneur then, because if he needs to be working all that time, there's something broken, totally something broken. Yeah. And he needs to fix himself. Yeah. And, but, and I think a smart partner would understand that too. Yeah. And They'd kind of like, push back and be like, yeah, no, you need time with the family. Yeah, you need time. You need with to your buy back your time. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever way, um, so I think you have a lot of this stuff on your website, yeah. familyacademy.co. Yeah. So talk about it real quick and yeah. tell them where they can go download all the checklists all and the stuff. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Well, if you want to have an amazing partnership and be an amazing parent, you go to familyacademy.co. <laughs> I always cringe and Renee cringes too. Cause like people are like, Oh, a couple goals or, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. A, yeah, it's like we, we, we have challenges uh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh, we see therapists, we, mm -hmm. um, deal with our kids craziness. We mm -hmm. like, there's nothing people could be going through that we probably haven't gone through for the most part. Well, I think the biggest thing that we've done as parents and as a couple is to constantly be learning. Yeah. Like never stop investing in our relationship all the time. Yeah. 
in us, in the things we read, like we'll, I'll say, Hey, I'm reading this really good marriage book. Can you please read it too? I download it. Yeah. I read and we'll it. I don't have a choice because she hits me if I don't no, do it. No, that's not true. Yeah, I she don't does. hit. She attacks. <laughs> um, yeah. So Family Academy, I work with female entrepreneurs to help them gain more freedom in their lives by teaching them how to have a better relationship with their partner and their kids. Cool. So all the stuff around uh, our yeah. quarterly retreats, weekly, weekly meetings. meetings. Books I'm reading. Books. Yeah. Resources. Absolutely. Kids issues. Yeah. Health stuff. I mean, creating routines, routines and rituals. Habits, yeah. yeah. So you guys can all check that out. I think there's a lot of stuff that we do. That's, that's, um, and some people, I don't know, like some people say to me, they're like, well, I don't want to have that much rigidity around my relationships. I'm like, well then don't want more cause yeah. it's required. Rigidity. Right? Yeah. Like there's too much structure. They're like, why is it so rigid? Why do you have to meet every week and have a strict agenda? Yeah. It's like, well, I know it sucked for me to think about that too, but it's just I hated a good scheduling something in my calendar to meet with my husband. Oh yeah. Yeah. You were like, <laughs> I was like, babes, add it to the list. You're like, no, I want to talk about it now. I'm like, but it's out of yeah. context and we don't have the travel oh, it schedule. It still drives me crazy though. Add it to our weekly agenda, Renee. Let's talk, talk about it now. But it's just I'm like, but I want to, I know you do. <laughs> and I love you because that's, that's, you know, the way you like to, to deal with stuff. Um, we have the kind of the 45 minute fighting called the therapist rule, which kind of sucks but we both do it so we don't fight <laughs> <laughs> if it lasts long it's like it's kind of like smarten up and say sorry quick or we're gonna have to go and spend an hour at somebody um <laughs> it's just like we go there and we both laugh we're like yeah we kind of are over this but oh but here's the good thing about working with a really good therapist or partner is that if you look at the male and female brain it's very different yeah and your relationship yeah um but a good therapist will easily interpret what we're thinking and trying to say. Like, I remember one time we were working with ours, I was like, blah, 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 all this stuff. And she's like, oh, what you're trying to say is this, this, and this. And then you were like, oh, yeah, I get that it. makes sense now. And I'm like, why couldn't you just read my mind? Yeah, why don't you read my brain? Yeah. Um, Good or bad, you should always be working. Yeah, and that's what's, what's weird. Like, people are like, think therapist is bad. It's like no. having a coach having like mentors. Yeah. yeah. Mentors. These are like having somebody external to your relationship totally. kind of objectively look at the communication unbiased. style and unbiased mm -hmm. and just be like, Hey, I think this is what's happening. Am I right? And it's like, Oh yeah, that's a really interesting perspective. Um, how do you balance? And again, we don't like the word balance, but integrate the entrepreneurial drive and the guilt as a mother. Oh God. I just, I, I mean, I write a lot about this. Yeah. Um, so I remember in our first, at the beginning of our relationship, mm -hmm. even the idea of having somebody clean our house, you were like, worried. no, that's my job. Cause I grew up in a household where that was my responsibility. Um, it's there, I, you can't just be cured of your feelings of guilt. I work with my own therapist now that like you don't go and see, it's just for me. And she helps me identify why I feel so guilty about things like you will tell me, Renee, go for a massage, get your nails done, you know, take a couple hours off one afternoon and just treat yourself. Sure, I book it, I do it, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, the things I could be doing that's more productive than getting my nails done. So it's guilt and it, it still exists. But when it comes to like relationships or parenting and the guilt that's connected between being with your family or working on your business, again, it comes down to the expectations and communication. So like your friend saying, oh, I'm going to be hustling three years for this business. And after that, we'll be set. It's like, you don't know that. It's not guaranteed. But what is guaranteed is your family will be there if you're there for them. And I actually wrote about this not that long ago. It's like you could spend five years hustling to make your business succeed. But you don't know if it can be successful. But if you spend five years hustling to make your family and your relationship succeed, they will definitely be successful. Relationships are the most important thing. You don't need to be working 80, 90 hours a week, every week for three years on your business. And if you do, what's going wrong? <laughs> your relationships will fail. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like some people get addicted to the hustle and their reasoning for doing it is for their family, but yet their family never asked them to do it. Like you never once asked me, go work harder so that we can buy another home or, or another cool thing yeah. or go on more I also don't trips or vacations. care about that stuff though. Yeah, but it's just funny because like people say like, I'm doing this for my family, but yeah. And some people are. And those people- I know, but I'm just saying, I don't think the family ever asked for it. No, 
No. No. But and, and this is why people like you exist. So you help these people for all your free content out there and the people that hired your help is you help them understand that it doesn't have to be this way. And here are the tools to get you out of this slump or out of this stupid mindset anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love the idea of integrating because if you do it right, it's just, again, this Renee, you call me the scientist, which kind of makes sense. Cause I'm always trying to optimize, like, how do I get more out of my day? Mm-hmm. Like, and sometimes I can take it to a crazy extreme where it's like 15 minute increments, but you know, it's, and everything's in the calendar as you know. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's an interesting exercise in like, how do you design a day in a week or a month that in that day there's vacation, there's health, there's what, like there's work stuff, there's, um, fitness stuff, there's family stuff, yeah. you know, so that like, I don't need a vacation. We go on vacation. My vacations look very much like my normal days. Hey, hey, hey. you can say <laughs> such a great song. You guys can say, <laughs> who, who's a, Oh, I don't know. Artist. I forget. On vacation but by every, every Dirty single, Heads. Big, yeah, I think so. Dirty something heads. like that. Yeah. Kelsey Ramsden yeah. recommended it. It's great. No, oh, and I wanted to say something about the hustle. Oh, so you and I most recently got a lot of clarity because you actively work and review your vision board for the year and your five year plan. And admittedly, I haven't been doing that lately. And you've been just hounding me for my five-year plan. Whether or not it makes sense, you wanted to see something. I just need to know And where we're I going. put one together. Yep. And I used to create these plans with filters like, what would my parents think? What would Dad, Dan think? Who am I trying to impress? As though I'm writing in my journal with the hopes of someone secretly finding it because I want them to know what I really think about them. This one no filter. I was like, this is what Renee wants. I don't care who's going to disagree. And I presented it to you and you had a couple questions, but every si- single day since that day, you have been a hundred percent better husband and partner because at least you understand me. A I just bit needed more. to know. You needed to know. Yeah. Cause I mean, for me, it was, if I don't know, like, it's almost like the why, if I don't know why I get up and I create to have impact and create value, because you're one of the most important people in my life. If I don't know how that aligns with what you want, then it's kind of like, I don't feel like there's a purpose. Right. Yeah. So it's, and that, that was the big thing. Like, and it's just so valuable, I think for yourself and, and, um, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen you execute against it, which has been awesome. Um, so how have you dealt with the guilt though? Going back to the, the mama guilt, like, what do you, you know, you said it, there's, you know, it's hard to get over, but like, what are things you can do or perspectives that you have around that? It's, it's carving out time for yourself. Like what have I been talking about for the last seven years is taking drum lessons. And finally I said, Thursday nights, 7 PM, my night I'm doing drum lessons. Boom. boom. Um, the other thing I love to do is CrossFit working out. That's a non-negotiable for me at least five days a week. Every day. And you work around that for me. hundred percent. Yeah. So that I make I mean, you breakfast I every day. Most people don't do. know. I make you breakfast every day. You do. And you heat things in a skillet. <laughs> yes, I cook. <laughs> uh, um, <it's, laughs> like I know it's not like this beautiful, elaborate breakfast no, served in bed. It's the same thing every day. Every it's day fine. is the same thing. And you, I wouldn't even like it in bed because you know I don't you like should, food. I'm not allowed and... to eat in bed. <laughs> but yeah, the point yeah. is the guilt. Yeah, yeah. It's um. The, the communications that we, there's a lot of things too. I have a really good friend who works on unconditioning. So she coaches people to uncondition themselves about these feelings of guilt. Like, well, I should be cooking and cleaning and doing all the laundry and groceries because that's what women did for the last 5,000 years. Well, yes and no, there are more men doing that now as well. So it's the unconditioning. It's like not having such high expectations for yourself. Quite frankly, the worry that the time we spend worrying about those things, you should, should be spend focusing on being a better parent, being a better partner. You know, who cares about the dishes? I used to do the dishes like the moment a cup was dirty. Now I'm like once a day. That's it. That's cool. If I get to it. I would do it once a week, but that's just me. I know you would. Yeah. Um, it's the unconditioning. And talking about it too, like, why do you feel guilty? I know men feel guilty too. It's not just women. Yeah. Do I feel, it's funny because I, we You're were on vacation. Though. Yeah, we were on vacation and, and I just feel like the, I, I mean, I, I jokingly say it, but I kind of believe them like 
the best dad in the world. Just just because I grew up in such a different environment that I'm like winning every day if yeah. I just show up and give my kid a hug and a kiss and like say you love them. Yeah, and just like hey, and you know what? Maybe that's a huge step for some of your listeners too. Is for sure, just giving them a hug and a kiss and yeah. saying I love you. I'm proud of you. Like some every day. Yeah, and it's and it and um, so it's kind of funny because like I'm thinking like man I'm I'm the best dad ever and I think you feel like you're not mom like yeah and if I said you were you wouldn't improve no yourself. I'm talking about it for yourself it's like it's I don't know and I've talked to my other guy friends we all feel that we're like oh you know we're like doing stuff mm. with our kids and we're taking yeah. them on trip and we feel really good and then moms are like I'm not doing enough yeah. and it's you know and it's kind of interesting uh because technically you do a lot more than than I do for sure um what do you think people uh, would want to know from Renee, the other the other person? Like, well, how? Here's a better question. There's some people listening that don't have a supportive partner. Yeah, and that's the hardest part. As I coach software entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. like they're like, "Hey, I, I see the relationship you have. I hear about all the routines and rituals you guys do, but my wife wouldn't be on board." Or I'm on this journey of personal development and growth, and I just feel like they're not. Yeah. What's your thoughts around that? Yeah, it's, well, I think of like Philip McKernan when we worked with him a few years ago and he has this metaphor about him climbing up the mountain and he's going towards his passion and his wife wasn't next to him and he was really trying to pull her up. She wasn't ready for it. And he finally let go to have her do her own thing, to find her own purpose and her own journey. And when she discovered that for herself, whether or not he was already on the other side of the mountain, she was at least making progress. And, you know, speaking to those, and I speak to a lot of these people too, that don't want to be on board with these rituals and routines and the stuff that we do, it doesn't work for everybody. But if there's one thing that they can do to change the course of their relationship or parenting style, do that. If it's meeting every two weeks to discuss something, do that. If it's going on a retreat once a year to completely disconnected, do that. For like, with each other. Yeah. It's yeah. like we do it quarterly and we do weekly meetings. Yeah. And for some that's too much, that's fine. Um, but the communication and setting the boundaries is is huge. Like there's I know there's a lot of I don't want to classify all men, but men that are hustlers and they're entrepreneurs and their wives are like they have a job or a stay at home mom and they're like they don't understand that passion and that hustle so they don't have a seemingly good relationship with their significant other she needs to speak up and the husband or the partner needs to also be like hey honey what do you want like you pushed me so hard for the five-year plan and I didn't want to do it I said you're not going to care or you're just going to push me to do something else and I have presented it to you and ever since then you've just been like this is awesome you've been completely relaxed and supportive about it maybe the woman needs to do that too Hmm. And do you feel like if the other person isn't on that journey, that there's a way to kind of get them on there? Like, what would your, if somebody comes to you and says, you know, even as a woman, like I'm really driven and passionate about my business, but my husband seems to be playing video games and super mm -hmm. lazy. And well, there's also enabling <laughs> and yeah. you and I talk a lot about that too. Um, the thing about journeys though, is most people aren't on, the journey at the same time. Mm. And I think that couples need to understand and respect that. And there's a difference too between pushing someone and encouraging someone. And there's a fine line. Like you've, in my perspective, have pushed me, pressured me to do a triathlon and I don't want to do it. Right. But you might think, no, no, I'm encouraging her. It, so it's, and I push back saying, no, Dan, I feel the pressure. So just not going to do it. <laughs> You're like, okay, okay. Um, but yeah. And it's, it's so unfortunate. I see so many intelligent, amazing people that are just in a funk or it's a time of their life or something's happening and they're not inspired. They're not motivated and they don't want to hear it from anybody else. Sometimes you just got to let them go through it. Yeah. It's interesting. It's almost like they could be out of sync. Like, totally. like their partner could be in this like, you know, hill climb and they're in a bit of a funk and it's just, it's, it's a delicate balance. Like if somebody were to ask me like, Hey, are you pressuring Renee to do a triathlon? I'd be like, hell no. I never once said to it to anything. I thought she'd be interested, right? Like I've never, I just- The other day you had me try, try on my shoes. Yeah, because, because your shoes. friends all signed up and I was like, I know. if you want to do it, I got a bike and I'll lend you my bike. And then you're like, I don't like this pressure. And I was like, oh, got it. And yeah. Because like my whole thing, and 
um, I share, I share this probably more often. I should share it more often is the whole idea of like the lighthouse versus the tugboat Mm -hmm. because my whole thing, and this is for relationships or, you know, even if you have people in your family that aren't on board and are criticizing you, it's just like, be, be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. I have control over what time I wake up, Mm -hmm. what I do with my day, how I communicate, how Mm -hmm. I show up. You know what I mean? I don't have control how anybody else reacts. And like, if that inspires somebody to do something, then great. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I feel like that is better use of someone's energy than to try to, you know, kind of beat somebody over the head, you know, like you should start reading books. And you always say, I only help the people swimming swimming towards towards me. me. Yeah. And it's, it's hard because you like, you see this person you love and you care about drowning out there and you're like, Oh my God, I need to run in and save them. But maybe that's the worst thing for them. And unless this person's life is at risk, then sometimes they need to go through that. They need to be mm-hmm. dragged through the mud in order to learn something, to come out of it on the other side of being like, man, that was shit. But look what I learned. Look where I am now. It's kind of like CrossFit. And, and be ready for when they turn to you for advice. Yeah. And like CrossFit, I hated it. I hated it so much. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. And I remember one day, Wendy at her gym, it was like the first or second week I was there, I was, I was ready to quit. And I sat next to her and I just before a warm up, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. I really don't like CrossFit. She goes, you know what? The first two months suck, but after that it gets a lot better. And there was something about the timing of that. And it was three months later, I was doing a competition with her. And so it was the right time. It was the right place from the right person. I needed that encouragement. That person thing yeah. is big. Yeah. Yeah. One of my, my tricks, uh, nobody's asking, but I'll pretend they're asking. I'll ask um, you a question. Uh, well, I'm going to say it cause you don't know what the question is just like, how do you support your partner? So like one thing, um, I've done, um, uh, not going to tell you when or how, but is, you know, talk to the people around. So like, even if I know, like, cause we're really close and you know, sometimes you don't, you don't want that from me because mm-hmm. you know, you just don't, um, it's better to work with the people around the other person. So like mm-hmm. if your wife, like, let's say your wife was absolutely like, you know, obese and really need to get her health in check. And the doctors told her or the, or the man or whatever. Um, it's better for you to work with their friends to kind of get them on board. Mm-hmm. I think, um, it just, just easier. Yeah. Um, it's a different att- It's a different approach worth considering. Um, why do you feel like you're such a driven mama? Like why, why do you wake up every day to produce content, to help other female entrepreneurs, to be a better mother, to be a better female entrepreneur? Like what, where does that drive come from? I wake up every morning to, you know, your alarm clock, (laughs) but then I see you having your coffee and doing your gratitude journal and meditating. And you've been like incrementally becoming a better person every single day because of your routine. And I think, wow, I can do that too. And I post on social media and I write my blog posts and people say this has helped Renee. And like even just one person, it's like, wow, it's it's crazy. And like even the people that aren't necessarily entrepreneurs, don't even have kids that are downloading my content and doing their couples retreats and they're saying, you've saved my relationship. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a licensed professional. I am just living proof that you can have kids and you can get married and you can launch two businesses. Like maybe some people don't know that we had two babies and moved twice, launched two businesses in two years. Mm -hmm. Most people do that in a lifetime. Yeah. And we managed to survive. Now ask me details about that time in my life. And it's, yeah. And I I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Somebody should have sat us down and told us to calm down. But But the, the motivation every day it's, and most recently it's been like, I'm an asset and I have talent And if this can motivate even one female entrepreneur or one female to start a business or to take the next step or for an entrepreneur couple to like decide that they want to have kids because they know they can balance now their business or family and being a parent. Yeah, the amount of entrepreneurs that have reached out, um, we did the the integrated family video and people reaching out because they didn't even think it was right for them to have kids Mm -hmm. based on the way they wanted to drive in their business. They just felt like I'm too committed to my business and I don't have the space for it. They have now revisited that belief. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. There's no right time to have a kid. There's not. 
Yeah. And when and then when you think there is and something else happens. And yeah. if you're an entrepreneur, you'll you'll, you'll fill that out. void with something yeah. else. Yeah. For sure you will. Um, but why do you think that's like I get the motivation, but what is it about that that you enjoy? Like mm. why do you do it? Like I no disrespect to men, but I I genuinely believe that women will save the world. I believe we, we need more women leaders. We need more women CEOs and women in politics. And there's not enough people encouraging women to go out and take these big steps. And so I wake up to do that, to encourage women to start businesses, to be like, hey, you're going to have a family and run a business. It's okay. You know, it's kind of be shitty for a while, but you can do this. I did it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, and I just feel like the world needs more female entrepreneurs and more female power. What have you learned about raising kids that you think might be useful to other entrepreneurial families? You don't need to buy an alarm clock. No, <laughs> they wake clocks. you up every yeah. single day, a little human. Um, so raising kids and running a business? Yeah, just about like, you know, I think that entrepreneurs, one of my challenges is, you know, how do you, how do you try to raise non-entitled kids, right? Because oh, yeah, like tough. obviously my, the life that my kids are experiencing it's not thing is like night and day different. Yeah. Like my kid's been in multiple supercars. He's six right. years old. I was 30 probably when I sat in my first. So it's like yeah, I think, well, 50 flights in the first year of birth. I didn't get on a yeah, plane which is amazing 18. for yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. But it's just like how, that's the question I struggle with. But like, what are things that you think about when it, as it pertains to like being a better mom or what are the tools like, cause you do so much that I think again, you take for granted that people would probably really enjoy hearing yeah. around like how you having kids, first of all, yeah. makes you hyper-focused with your time because I mean, before you had kids, you had 24 hours in a day to do whatever the hell you wanted to do. Um, but as soon as you have kids, now all of a sudden there's routine and they're waking up at a certain time and they're going to bed at a certain time and then they have hockey or swimming and school's out. So it's like you have these hours in the day that are your time to work and you better get the shit you need done at that time because once the kids get home, if you're a present parent, you're going to give some of that time to your kids as well. Um, and so it allows you to be a little more organized. Um and what was the second part of that question? Well, just like um, th the things you've learned about like either discipline or mm. education or oh my gosh. like there's I so, I mean, that's the thing is that you yeah. do so much. I don't think even you realize it. Well, I didn't think I'd be reading the books that I'm reading because I used to read just marketing and sales and PR books and I loved it. But now it's just like understanding actually. So in the whole parenting thing, what I've learned that is the most important thing in being a good parent is for the parents to be working on themselves more than anything else. You can't fix a child. And just like the quote on our chalkboard right there says is you can't fix a flower or something. How, I mean, you can read it. I can read it. Yeah. When the flower doesn't bloom, you change the environment. Not the flower. Not the flower. Or something right. like that. So when the flower doesn't bloom, you change its environment, not the flower. So yeah. there's, most times there's nothing wrong with the child. There's wrong. It's wrong with the, the environment. And so mom and dad, like kids can absorb energies like you wouldn't believe. So if you're pissed off, they're going to be pissed off, even though they were happy two seconds before. The parents and the individuals having a good relationships with themselves is the most important thing in parenting. And I didn't realize this till a few months ago when I started working on myself. Cause I always thought, Oh my gosh, you know, one of our kids is so aggressive and hates changes and what's wrong with him. I realized there's nothing wrong with him is what's wrong is how I'm reacting to how he's reacting. And that translates to business, like managing people, managing teams. It's like, it's not them. It's you're the leader. Like you got to work on yourself and deal with those things, like you would a child almost. Yeah, Mark Mark Albert uh, on the show. He recently said something that he used to be upset with his team when they weren't performing, and now he asks himself, "What environment did I create that got them mm -hmm. to make that decision?" Right. Yeah. And then then it's cool because you have 100 percent control over it. You can't control Max or Noah. Yeah. We can only control how we react to them, and that's something we yeah. have power over. Exactly. Um, and then what about the education? Cause I know a lot yeah. of people ask you about like 
yeah. raising these little dudes. Well, we're fortunate enough to live in a great community that has incredible school system. Um, Canada in itself has pretty good education. We tried homeschooling. It didn't work with the fact that you and I both worked from home. Um, we tried it. And then we tried, you know, private schools, which was great. But for us, it was, you know, our public school system is fa fantastic. Um, and you've said this before. I don't know if you quoted anybody, but uh, every child is homeschooled. It's just up to the parents to realize it. No, it's just something I yeah. realized myself. But it's true. And yeah. Every kid's homeschooled. It's just do the parents actively homeschool? Right. Or just do they, do they recognize, is it proactive or reactive? Well, and that's the thing is the moment you recognize it, every moment you're with your child or even with your partner is homeschooling is an opportunity to teach them something. Yeah. So Max, who's going into grade two, um, has been formally educated in just French, reading, writing French, but give him an English book at his level and he can read it better than the French book. Yeah. Why? Because we talk to him in English. We, we show him, him the English night. words. We were, yeah. yeah. And so I was like, wow, the fact that he's being formally educated in another language but understands this language a little bit better is because we are unconsciously educating them. Mm. But you consciously educate them. And what we do, yeah. That's what I mean. Like you sat down with yeah. Noah and helped him with his muffin business that he sold yeah. at the triathlon and made a bunch of money. And like, But it is so interesting how... Like these little minds, like for instance, at Sudan did a triathlon the other weekend and Noah wants to make money. He thinks if you open a bank account that the bank gives you money. So we had to teach him that you have to put <laughs> money in it. No. Okay. So, um, so he them. wanted to make money to buy more Pokemon cards. And yeah. I said, what can you do to make money? He's like, well, I'll sell muffins. Perfect. So I taught him about the cost of goods sold and about how he has to pay me for my time. I for know. Helping I was him. like, dude, we went for a hike and I was asking him how much you charged them. Yeah. I was like, he got a deal. Yeah. So my he even said to me, he goes, my mom says adults pay her this much money, but yeah. uh, I only have to pay her this much money. Cause you're cuter than most. Yeah. Adults. I was like, okay, so she gave you a bro <laughs> but deal. And so like, and now he went to this triathlon and he was cheering for him and his friends and walking around selling muffins. And like, at first he was charging $3 and I was like, oh, you know what? That's a bit much. I don't think you're going to sell them for that. He's like, no, I will. He tried, no sales. And I was like, let's bring it down a little bit. So two bucks. He sold them all. I mean, mostly Even to two is pretty high. I was like, well, they're like a dollar. Market. Well, yeah, but he learned. He's cute. But so anyways, going back to what we're talking about, it's like consistent. Always be learning. That's what we, we always talk about that. Always yeah. be learning. Well, it's growth. It's part of our you, you need to. You can't just, like, some people finish school and think they never have to be educated again in the day of their lives. And, like, you don't grow. That's not how it works. No. And I think that's why people are, they stay in the rut that they're in because they don't, they don't try something new. They don't learn something new. They don't read a different topic. Um, they don't teach people something new. So if somebody's watching this and feels like they're in a rut, they're stuck, they're not you know, they potentially could be going through like a minor depression or struggle. What's your advice for them? I say the foundational things for your health need to be met. If they aren't proper hydration, proper sleep, exercise, nutrition, if those things are being met and still in the funk and still experiencing depression, then obviously go see a professional therapist let me so tell those you four things if we just i want to unpack it because I, I feel like people say oh i'm doing that stuff yeah. you're talking like wake up drink, drink water drink water mm -hmm. drink maybe a gallon of water a day kind of thing mm -hmm. on the food side eat lean yeah. proteins greens yeah no carbs healthy well, fats I, like I, I just feel like if you don't tell people they think oh, i eat healthy I, you know my best friend he says i eat healthy it's like yeah. no you don't right you know what I mean? But he does. So I'm just, I think it's yeah. important to actually spell it out. Um, you talked about uh, fitness. Yeah, fitness. Right? So, well, let's talk sleep. So sleep means what? Yeah. And how do you track that? Yeah. So, well, I use uh, my iWatch yeah. and I have the iSleep app or something. Yeah. You use an Aura ring. There's yeah. different things. And like yeah, some of them sleep, can be expensive. Sleep track it. Yes. It's free for most people. But I know this, the moment you start tracking your sleep, whether it's like a manual digital thing, you actually focus more on getting a good night's sleep. Yeah. My routine for my good night's sleep starts at lunchtime. Yeah. So no, no caffeine. More caffeine. And like I know it you just, wear the blue blocking light. Yeah. Glasses. And it's just, and it, and it's, it's tweaking because what works for me isn't going to necessarily work for some other people. But you're just people. saying get good sleep. Figure it out. 
Be and the then, scientist and yeah. figure it out. And then um, the exercise, mm -hmm. what's your prescription for that? Find something you love to do. Once a week. Oh, every day if you can. Exactly. Yeah. So as I'm saying is if we yeah. don't tell people, they're not going to okay, do every it. Every day. Yeah. So I do CrossFit five days a week. Yeah. And you do it a few times a week and then you I bike every and day. swim. and yeah. Every day. That's my rule. Sweat every day. Yeah. Um, who did you need to become to be the mother, partner, entrepreneur you are today? Someone, so I had a very clear life's plan when I was 18 years old that I wrote down and I said, this is what I want for my life. The problem is that once I achieved that, so it was like married, two and a half kids, a white picket fence, which is pretty much like a metaphor for this beautiful home and running a successful agency in New York City. Moncton's close enough. <laughs> um, once I achieved that, I failed to rewrite that plan because we think we write this plan once that we're good, we're set. We don't have to revisit it. And that's what he I hesitated in running my five-year plan thinking, oh gosh, this is set in stone. I can't change this, which is, it's not true. I needed to become the person that was okay with chaos and, and super okay with uncertainty. Um, it's just like, I mean, when you show up to the airport, like I used to travel once a year and now I go almost once every other week because I didn't like the hustle and bustle, but being okay with uncertainty allowed me to be a better entrepreneur, to be a better mom. Cause like when you're a parent, I mean, you, really like th there's no manual and things are not going to be what you expect at all. Your kids could be born super healthy and then have like a learning disability or something happen. And it's not in your life's plan. If you're not okay with that uncertainty, then you will just completely be frazzled. Um, where do people, if they want to learn more about the way you approach life and integrate and mm -hmm. follow along in your funny stories that you share with the world? <laughs> um, cause you're way more clever than I am on Instagram, more creative. Uh, where, where would people go? So, um, you can go to Instagram, Renee, R E N E E underscore Warren. Why don't you have my last name? I don't know. I do own ReneeMartel.com. Good. If you yeah. didn't, somebody No, uh, I just love my name. Yeah. And I didn't care if you changed and it. And it's pretty much like the month before we got married, Canada changed their uh, passport policy to allow you to have a 10-year passport. And I was like, saving time and money, I can change my last name another time. Um, again, like the uncertainty thing, I could change it at any moment. No, I'm just, I like my name. Yeah. And I just, my, maybe someday I'll change it. But Renee I mean, Warren, honestly, as you know, my I initials know. spell raw. Oh, baby. Yeah, I so like Renee underscore Warren um, and familyacademy.co is also where you can cool. find me. Check her out. She's smart. She's my wife. <laughs> She's my partner in crime. She's the mother of Max and Noah. Um, and now you guys got the behind the scenes of well, what it's of. like. Kind of. So. You could have shared anything you wanted. I gave you the platform. <laughs> um, you can just ask her directly. I, I feel like you. I should be asking you questions. Maybe some other day. <laughs> if you guys want to hear that, leave a comment below. Let us know. Renee, I love you, babes. Love you Thanks too. for coming on. Babes. All right. I don't want to shake your hand. I'll come give you a hug. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Escape Velocity. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment with your biggest insight from our conversation. Be sure to check out the next episode.